Hi, it's Tony Board from CassetteComeback.com and today to alleviate some boredom let's have a nice long video. I mean, I don't know about you guys but it's getting a bit hard now. I mean, I had to shout at my neighbours this morning. I had to go out of that door 8 o'clock this morning and tell them to keep the noise down. I mean, come on, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. I mean, I wasn't enjoying my pint of lager at all because of all the noise they were making. But anyhow, I came upstairs to do a bit of tidying and going through all my boxes of used cassettes. And, you know, I get used cassettes when I buy job lots. I don't really pay anything for them because I don't sell them. But, coming across what was in there, I found a few interesting ones. So I thought, meh, what the hell, let's do a video on these. So how we're going to start out. Let's start out with this one. It's an Iowa an Iowa C60LX and turns out this are always interesting, I mean, you know Hello, this is Russian seller, vintage rare, night cassette, 70 pound, yeah, 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 of course you are uh, But cassettes with manufacturers names on them, apart from maybe Sony because they made so many But you know, Tiak, Kenwood, Pioneer, Denon, Marantz you know, they always, always carry a lot of money because not many of them were knocking around, even though most of them are just rebrands of something else. You know, like the Bang & Olsen cassette, highly treasured, is a 1989 BASF Chrome Extra with a different sticker and black hubs, but hey-ho. So, Iowa. So, see what it says on the back. Limited warranty. Avoid exposing your tape to extreme temperatures and so off the car. Okay, uh, it doesn't say who it's made from. I've read somewhere that it could be a TDK, it could be, it could be anything, don't know. But I doubt Iowa would have put their name on stuff that was garbage, especially if they were giving stuff like this away with their decks. You know, you're not going to give away a really rubbish cassette that makes the expensive deck sound rubbish, are you? So I'm hoping this one is going to sound okay. Um, oh, let's have a see what was recorded on this. This is England, Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, conducted by Alan Barlow. Hmm. So yeah, pretty plain and ordinary. I've, I've stuck like a, just a bit of white paper on top just to make it look cleaner. But yeah, an Iowa C60LX. Now let's go for something colourful. A Maxell Neons. Mmm, and these, yeah, these come in a five pack. I don't think they sold these separately. These, I imagine, were around the year 2000-ish to look like that. But the, there's, an, there's a, an orange, a yellow, a green, a pink and a blue. But the shells are, you know, they're, they're not the Cy hand shell. But if you look at these stripages here, they seem to just be the, the shell that the late UR came in from Pangung. But on this one, it's just got a clear slip sheet and the neons is actually printed on the shell. But it otherwise, you know, it's got the Maxell sharp tooth hubs. I'm guessing this is just a UR in another shell, but it's got the traditional Maxell leader on it. Yeah, probably just a UR in another shell. <laughs> UR stickers. Let's put some... That's not going to look very nice on there, is it? Think about it. But then, you know, at this time, I don't think Maxell really cared. Playing J card. Yeah, but it's interesting because it's a lovely, bright, very 80s looking cassette. That didn't come out in the 80s. So we'll look at that one. Next one we're going to look at is the Yashima UFO Plus Ultra Ferric Oxide Low Noise. Nah, nah, nah. But wide spectrum, and you don't often see that. Okay, five year replacement guarantee. Oh, yes, very type zero looking this. This is a screw shell, very uneven tape pack. Not a lot to say. This had. The Mitchell Minstrels on it. So look at the rest of the J card. Five year guarantee. They were very explicit about this five year guarantee, weren't they? Not like a lifetime guarantee or whatever, like some of them. No, five years, that's it. And this was recorded 19, 1981, looks like, 81. So this has got to be, like I say, at least 1981, but it looks probably earlier than that. Yashima, I seem to remember them making cameras. Or was that Yashika? Yeah, it could have been Yashika, but anyhow, we'll have a look at that, possibly a Type 1, uh, Type 0, I should say. And we'll look at this one as well. Super Ferro XD from Magna. The strange thing about this straight away is I look at it, it says, made in England. I thought that Magnas were made in Germany, but this one is made in England. This isn't the right case for it. No, it's not. This is a TDK case, but anyway. 
high ferro tape quality, high ferro recordings of music and languages on all cassette car recorders. Okay, meant music and, you know, words, not languages, but anyhow. Uh, bit of a wibbly frequency glass, 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 graph. Decent enough shell. Nice and scratchy. It's screwed, flat slotted screwed. You see, it says made in England, but this this says this says Agfa to me more than anything else. But uh, looks like a Type Zero, but probably won't be. And it's quite retro cool that actually. It's uh, yeah, it's clearly the yeah. It's a it's a nice looking cassette. Though. I'm sure that one will be okay. Let's go to something bright again with the street sound. Now, the street sound. There's, there's two colours of these. I don't think you can get cassettes that look any more 80s than them. I mean, they look fantastic, don't they? I mean, this one's sealed, and it took me a lot of time to find one of these sealed because these were never actually sold by themselves. They, they came free with um, cheap Walkmans from a company called Curry's, who was the sister brand of Dixon's, who were the UK's biggest high street electrical retailers. And uh, if you look at the actual hubs, can you see? They're called sausage hubs. Yeah, these are ICM. And that makes sense because ICM, I've shown you, they made Seisho and um, Dixon's home brand tapes at one point. And I think I featured this in the ICM video, but I didn't actually record on it. But yeah. I love these, not just because of the 80s-ness, 80s-ness, but the nostalgia, because I did get a pack of these. I got five, I think I got two yellows and three blues when I was a kid with a cheap Walkman from Curry's. And I just loved how these looked. And they, you know, when I looked at them, I, I was transported back to being like 10 year old again. Really special cassettes, these, love them. But has the years been good and do they perform well? Well. Let's find out. And yeah, they did come, as you can see, sealed. No J card at all. And last one, we're going to look at another Iowa. The Iowa FRCS Super Slim. And the ones uh, I've got, these actually in stock, have got SS on the front, but I've never actually used one. Um, right, let's have a look at these hubs. Come on. Who's these hubs from? Well, it could be one of three places, but I'm going to put my money on racks for this. It could be ICM again. It's not Denon, because Denon have got big clips in for their hubs like this, but uh, yeah, it's, it's either going to be ICM again, or it's going to be Rax, but uh, again, Iowa, yeah, you see, I'm thinking of this, because the front, you know, SS, super slim, and yeah, very plain J card. Playing stickers, but uh, like I can say if it's racks or ICM, they'll, they'll be pretty, uh, pretty decent tape in there. So we've got six cassettes to look at today. So let's give them a whirl. Okay, so I'm going to use a ZX9 for this because I want these to try and sound as good as they can. Some are old, some might be Type Zero. They're all used. Let's see what a nice three head with pad lifter can do with it. Um, you know, as time goes on, I believe that this is the finest recording deck I've got. I love my other decks, don't get me wrong. And the Revox B215 is still the king of the chrome tape. But for other tapes, yeah, I, uh, I, I go to this one more often than not. So, and I know you like see me buy stuff up. So let's start off with the... Iowa FRCS, which is the latest tape of the slot, which looking at it, like I say, it's either an ICM, but more likely to be a Rax. But let's check the calibration on this. Test tone's coming. Okay, the azimuth is nice and stable because the red light there. Levels nice and stable. And the bias is nice and stable. Gee, you'd think I'd already bias a deck for this tape, wouldn't you? Mm, but what I'm saying is, look how lovely and stable their meters are. That's a sign of a good tape with a good transport, that. Okay, so we're going to be using some old tunes from the YouTube audio library for this. You know, some old classics I've used before. Uh, apart from this first one, this first one is one which 
I have used before and a few of you have asked where do I get this song and it's called Sleep and I've said you can't because it's not finished it needs vocals and what you're listening to here is the instrumental from the end of the song however I am working with a renowned synthwave vocalist and producer who is currently working on the vocals for this so this song is going to get a release under my Villa Rosso moniker so stay tuned but for right now you can just enjoy the end instrumental and let's see how good this Iowa does it Let's have a look that is a nice deep chocolate brown I don't know if I would class this as a cobalt dot but that was peaking at plus five there and I thought that sounded superb to be honest this is a really good cassette really good plus five sounded great yeah like this one like I say if it is a Rax and I think it probably is um, just bear with me one second hold that thought because I've got a rack's just over here. Let's go into my magic box. There we go. Sorry about that, just on the fly. Yeah, if we look at them hubs, and then we've got this Rax SDSX. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm thinking this is a Rax. Yeah, it's got to be. I don't think ICM will go in this late on in the game so yeah but I never had a bad Rax cassettes very underrated cassettes I just wish Rax were easy to find but they're not but this I were yeah brilliant enjoyed that okay let's give this something a bit more challenging let's give whoops let's give it the potential type zero of the bunch the old Yashima UFO Let's have a see how different this bias is to the racks. Sorry, Iowa. Let's have a look. Okay, it hasn't got any azimuth. All right, let's just check the levels. Let's have a see. Oh, the levels are a bit low, but we can crank that. Okay, let's check the bias. Bias is a tiny bit high, but not massively off. Let's just... Uh, Turn it down just a little bit. So the bias and the lever about there. Oh, we've sort of got azimuth now. Okay, good. Right, so we've got a. Oh, it's, it keeps flicking. Let's just turn it a little bit. 
Okay, we've got stable azimuth, we've got levels, bias is just a little bit off now, a bit high, just tweak it, tweak it, tweak it. But other than that, it actually does do it, which a type zero wouldn't. So we've got bias, we've got levels, oh, the azimuth. Come on, mate. That's the thing about, you know, older, more fragile sets. Right, azimuth, levels, bias, come on. Right, that'll do. That'll do. I'm pleased enough with that. So it sounded a bit hissy, but uh, let's play it anyway. So this is an old one now. You might recognise this one from the YouTube audio library. This is called Star Drive. So, I think back in the day, which is like 40 years ago, this might have been a pretty decent cassette actually. Uh, it didn't come across as a Type 0, however, you probably heard there, it, maybe I rode it a bit too hot at plus 3, but it did have low-end distortion stroke dropouts. Look at the tape, I mean the tape is um, it's shiny, but it's a very normal looking ferret. But like I said, this could be age and stories related but it wasn't terrible i wouldn't class that as a type zero it's just it did have dropouts there but like i say what do you want for a tape this old but yeah that was pretty good okay let's try something colorful now let's try my beloved street sound let's hope that this well the years have been kinder to this and hope that this isn't the dropout fest that the Shima was, but I'd love this to sound great because I will put something good on this. Like a best of 1988 mix, that'd be good. So let's bias this up, see how it goes. Okay, we've got some azimuth, there we go, that was nice. Ooh, levels, levels are miles higher than they were for the Shima, that's a good thing. Bias, ooh, the bias is a lot lower though, so let's crank that up. And that should affect the levels. No, no. Good. We are all good on that one. So this next tune from the YouTube audio library is called The Emperor's Army.
yeah i mean like i say this is a, a used cassette of unknown origins it's got again nice deep chocolatey brown shiny tape in it yeah i mean did it sound like the best ferry car i've ever heard no but again it's used and i don't know how many years older or what it's been in that before that but perfectly usable it sounded good it wasn't a type zero that makes me happy i'm going to put something good on this because ultimately i find you only really notice the real flaws like i do now i'm sitting in here listening to this wearing my akg studio headphones so you know i'm picking everything out i play this on my hi-fi play this on my walkmans i'm not going to really tell so yeah i'm happy with that good gear icm love them right so what shall we go for next let's let's go for the other iowa like i say i don't know much about this at all apart from you know our friends in the east want a lot of money for these uh I, again it's opened i don't know what decks it's been in how it's been abused let's have a listen if see if it's any good because i like i say i can't imagine if this was bundled with iowa decks why they would give something that was rubbish with it that wouldn't make any sense so i'm hoping this is going to be half decent so let's bias it up let's have a look right azimuth okay the azimuth is locked on that's good level a bit low on level let's turn it up a bit bias whoa miles over bias compared to the street sound that's a good sign okay check the level again and check the azimuth goody gumdrops right this one is called a rising wave Yes, not a Type Zero. I mean, again, it's used. It's old. This looking at this from the old Iowa logo, this has got to be at least mid '80s, if not early, with the paper label. Picking at plus five, you only really knew it was a tape when the quietish bits were there, because this there was this was quite a bit of hiss on it, and this and again, nice dark chocolate brown tape, quite a bit of hiss on it. But when the music was properly playing, this did a great job. The trebles were certainly there, and so was the bass. Yeah, this this was a good cassette in the day, and this one still kind of is now. So yeah, that's that's good. I'm surprised at that. I I just had a feeling it's very low rent that this would have been terrible, but no, 
like I say, why would you give a bad tape away with your decks? Yeah, good one. Iowa, yeah, see Iowa on the tape so far. They're well worth having. So let's get something nice and bright in again now. Let's try the Maxell Neons. I'm gonna guess this is gonna perform like a UR, but let's find out. Okay, a bit of azimuth adjustment here. Quite a bit of azimuth adjustment. Loads of azimuth adjustment, unless... Oh, there we go. Right, okay. It's locked in, right. Take the levels. Okay, take it down a bit. Check the bias. Okay, nice and stable. Nice and stable. Nice and stable. Goody gumdrops. Right, this one is again from the YouTube audio, the YouTube audio library, and it's called Reverie. Yep, nice dark chocolate brown tape. Like I say, the shell says Pangong as it's, you know, the same style as the last URs. Chances are it's just UR tape in uh, a shell. I mean, it makes sense. You wouldn't make a special tape just for these because these are pretty rare and sell them in a five pack, which I imagine was cheap. So it's like you are, but the thing is, again, the right deck you can make a UR sound that good. Yes, the hiss is there, but again, I'm not going to use an R. It's like, I don't know, how could I put this? Say it's it's a beautiful, clear sky night full of stars and a full moon, and you're standing on a hill. How creepy would it be if you heard absolutely nothing? You wouldn't hear absolutely nothing, but you'd still be chilled and you'd still be wowed by how beautiful this planet can be. 
the ambient background noise. That's what I feel about Hiss on a cassette. Yes, it's there in the quiet bits, but it reminds me that it's a cassette. If I want to listen to something without any Hiss whatsoever, I'll listen to digital. But it just adds that certain something, and when the music plays, it's still there. You just can't sense it, but you do hear it, and that's what makes a cassette a cassette, and that's why I love Type 1s, because Type 1s are the most cassette-sounding cassettes. And this, this is really good, and the late you are's are really good. But I keep saying, the smartest investment you can make if you're serious about being with cassettes for the long haul, get yourself a good three-head deck that's been serviced. They will allow you to take cassettes like this and make them sound amazing. And that's worth every penny. So, the last cassette of the lot, <coughs> the Magna Super Ferro XD Type 0 lookalike made in England. A strange, strange cacophony of a cassette, but let's see how this performs. A little bit squeaky there. Could be an act for then. Right, okay, the azimuth, just a little bit of tweaks. So actually, no, lots of tweaks. Oh, come on. Come on, you know you want to. There we go. Right, azimuth locked in. Level tones. Okay. Bias. Okay. Oh, it's gone up a bit. Alright, bias is alright. Level's alright. Azimuth is alright. And so everything is alright. And now we're going to play another one from the YouTube audio library that's called Iron Fist. Okay, so I managed to mess up the original audio for this segment, so I'm redoing it afterwards, that's why it doesn't match. But basically what I was saying here is that the Magna, it's too hot peaking at 5, we need to get this peaking a little less because it sounded distorted. So I'm going to drop the levels down, however this sort of brings me to the main gripe I have with the ZX9, which is that it's got a left and a right volume input selector yeah but unlike the cr7 and the dragon they both have a left and a right but they also have a master as well this does not have a master because the way i normally make sure that the tapes because all tapes can vary a bit from left and right channels that make sure that they get the right amount of signal is that i'll put a one kilohertz test tone in and then i'll just adjust the left and the right until they both just touch zero and then afterwards, I'll adjust the master volume to where I want the tape to record at, i.e. I'll turn it up, the master up a bit to make sure that they peak at, say, plus three. But you can't do this on the ZX9. It doesn't have the master. You have to do each channel individually every single time. And that's why it's a bit tricky now, because I'm going to have to sort of guess. It's not like I can just take the master and turn it down a bit so that this now peaks at around three as opposed to five. I've got to do it for each individual channel and sometimes that can cause a discrepancy where it's not quite totally accurate because if you look, the right channel is slightly lower than the left, but they are absolutely, you know, if you look here, yeah, the left channel is higher up than the right, so there's a slight imbalance there, and I'm just going to have to manually try and guess 
So I'm going to turn it down a bit and then turn it down a bit on there and hope that that will be about right for the Magna. So sorry about this uh, sort of ad hoc commentary, but it's the best you're going to get. Now, back to the tape. So it's not a Type Zero. Again, it's an old tape. Uh, it doesn't look premium. Don't know. It could buy. I, I put Agfa on this, but I know it was peaking at plus three there. But I could tell that the highs were rolled off compared to the source. Um, so, like I say, not a bad tape. Not a bad tape at all. Uh, but just yeah, maybe it needed to be recorded at zero. Maybe it needed to be newer. <laughs> but um, not an amazing performance. But I guess decent enough. So, let's go and have a little chat about what we discovered today. So, let's put these in order. I think the last place is a Magna Super Ferro. It didn't have loads of dropouts, it just that uh, it did lose the top end. Maybe it's because it's old, maybe because it was stored badly. It's not a Type 0 though, and that's a good thing. In next place down, I say the Yoshima UFO. This is because even though it did have dropouts, or it could be, I don't know if it was dropouts or if it was low end, um, saturation that was causing some sort of distortion but I imagine in the day this would have been a better cassette because this did have the high end I didn't notice any big high end dropout unlike I did with the Magna next down the list the street sound again it could be because of age I mean let's be honest these were always you know sort of like looked as a kiddies tapes and they came with cheap Walkmans Chances are this was used and abused a bit, but I still love the way it looks. And it sounded decent enough, not the best I've ever heard, but it sounded good enough. And like I say, it's just so gorgeous. Like the yellow one's so gorgeous. I'm gonna just put that there anyhow, because they're gorgeous. Right, next place, this Iowa. Yeah, this sounded well. I like this. I will put something good on this. Is it worth what these are currently being asked for on eBay? No, of course not. It's a cheapest looking cassette with a paper label, but it's Iowa. And uh, it sounded well enough. It really did. Second place, the Neons. This sounded superb. And like I say, modern you are taping it's got to be. If you've got yourself a good enough deck, the modern you are is a really good decent cassette and that that proved it i mean yeah i mean if you look at like the age difference between these this is a lot fresher tape so it is going to sound a lot better but yeah 
neons and in first place the Rax Iowa Super Slim because again this is a fairly well I say fairly new this is still probably 20 odd years old but in this company it's pretty fresh but yeah Iowa again didn't put the name to crappy tapes and Rax didn't make crappy tapes so yeah this I think sounded the best of the lot so yeah that was just a little bit of fun going through I've got more boxes so I'm sure I'll be able to pry some more strange cassettes out that maybe we've not seen before and do another video because let's be honest here, it's getting more boring and more boring and I've taken to play Roblox with my kids on the PC that's how bad it's got lately and doing video chats with people and drinking a lot and yeah so anyhow until next time stay safe keep your social distancing and there's no better way to do it than by recording some strange cassettes and getting surprising results which you never imagined and now i'm going to just show you this picture bing yeah and why am i showing you that here because i'm still getting people getting comments saying where to buy tape well it's called cassettecomeback.com i've got always a banner at the end of it or somewhere in it saying buy tapes here but always in the description it says if you want to buy tapes click here so what what more do you want me to do so just to be on the safe side again bing there we go and i'm going to put another one at the end but anyhow stay safe happy taping please like and subscribe and i'll see you next time bye bye